All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on the tomb of the Spider Queen. We're still fucking around. We're still trying to have some fun with some off the wall builds. Today, we have handcrafted this comp, well, most of it anyway, for an auto attack Li Ming. We're gonna go Aether Walker level one, teleport cost no mana. If Li Ming hasn't taken damage in the last three seconds, teleport's cooldown is decreased by two seconds. Casting teleport causes Li Ming's next magic missiles to deal 10% increased damage. Uh, we have a total of 1,321 health. We're probably not meant to be a melee character. However, there are some talents that really seem to benefit the playstyle. We're bringing in a Tassadar today because Tassadar can give us shields that heal us based on our auto attack damage. We had a little discussion about whether or not spell damage, which is what our uh, auto attack is actually going to do, we had a little discussion about whether spell damage would actually work with this or if it had to be physical damage. We read all the tooltips and uh, it looks as though that spell damage should work. Uh, that being said, the last time I played Lee Main was probably the last A through Z. So it's been a while. Uh, I'm not a Lee Main player. We're gonna have to, to kick some rust off here to try to get things going well, I'm sure. Uh, but I'm optimistic. I think I think we can do it, especially on this map. We have some pretty phenomenal lane clear. We should be fine. If we can rotate with Johanna and Azrodan together, they should start to scale like crazy. So if we could try to do that, if we can have Tass hold bottom, I mean, it should probably be top, but he's already bottom and that's okay. If we can have Tass hold bottom and then rotate between lanes, we might be able to scale like crazy. Now, we're not actually dealing that much increased auto attack damage at the moment. That will come later. So we want to help with the dunk here. Beautiful. And now collectively as a whole, we get the fuck out and go to the top lane. Oh shit, we still fighting. We still fighting. All right, here's an orb. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and then I proceed to miss everything else. If you've never seen Lee Ming before, our Q ability is the Seekers. Uh, it's actually three separate skill shots that we're trying to convene in one spot. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Uh, it's hard. Um, if you don't position it properly, you basically deal no damage. Enemies can move out of them. It is certainly something that takes a little bit of practice, of which I have done zero of. Our W ability is the Arcane Orb. It deals more damage the further the projectile goes. So you want to try to lead your target we're going to go for magic missiles, mark enemies for bonus damage. Uh, a little slow there. My bad. Uh, this is going to make it so when we cast the Seekers, if any of the Seekers hit a target, we're then going to be able to auto attack them for increased damage. So like right here, boom, look at that. All of that versus Arthas, actually not too shabby. Ooh, good damage there too. Rotate, rotate, rotate. That was the real one, and I missed everything. Arcane Orb is another one of those abilities that is hard to use, takes some practice, of which I've done none of. Beautiful, let's go back. Uh, our E ability is about as easy as it gets. It's a teleport. If we've been out of combat for a little while, we could teleport more. Sorry, I cleared the land, I wasn't thinking. Uh, let's try to hit Arthas here. Or battle. I really, I, I think this could work, team. I really think it could work. Okay, ready to clear. So, is there, yeah, there's a little visual representation for when someone is actually marked for extra damage. Very hard to see, though. Oh, I'm trying, boys. We're trying. Whoop! We fucking did it! So the idea is by the end of this game, we're gonna be an auto attacking fiend. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to do. It looks like our rotation got a little fucked up. We're gonna wait for Asmin to come back to the top lane. Hopefully he can dunk this relatively soon. Uh, we could just kind of poke at these buildings here. You know, I gotta say for someone who hasn't played Lee Ming in a while, I still got her range down pretty well. Like I'm just kind of I obviously play with quick cast, so I don't know the exact range of everything, but it's still lining up pretty good. 
Uh, we just picked up Calamity at level 7. This is going to allow us to deal damage when we teleport in on a target. So like right here. Now, of course, the most powerful thing about Li Ming, what makes Li Ming stand out from all of the other mages in this game is that she gets an incredible damage spike whenever someone on the enemy team is defeated. She actually gets all of her abilities reset. It's not just basic, right? Isn't all of them? And that allows us to just start fucking popping off in the right situations, like right here. We got all of our abilities reset off cooldown and we were able to jump back out to safety. Now with Calamity at level seven, oh, fuck. with Calamity at level seven, we have a way of dealing damage with our movement ability. So this is all about playing fucking close and playing real scary on a very squishy character, but hopefully just completely steamrolling someone with some melee burst damage. Kind of like that. That wasn't too shabby. Kind of like that. <laughs> uh, it's actually working out. We'll just blink over that. All right, all right, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. We're going back. Rui, thank you for the raid. Appreciate it, dude. Okay, level 10 is here. We're not gonna go for disintegrate. We're simply gonna pick up wave of force for even more burst damage. So far, we've dealt 22,000 damage in this game. Asmodan stacks are up to 177. That's pretty great for six minutes into the game. Things are actually looking pretty good. Other than the fact that the enemy team does have, I didn't teleport there, I could have done it. Other than the fact that the enemy team did get the first objective of the match. It's a little bit of a shame, but we can certainly work around that. Uh, I thought maybe our mana problems would be a little bit of an issue here, but so far it doesn't really seem like it. Um, I don't want to play too aggressively, because of course I don't know exactly where everyone is. Uh, we don't want to teleport into something that actually just completely gets killed, you know what I mean? We can turn in, and we probably should. The enemy team getting level 10 here pretty soon. They're going to be looking for a fight. We'll help clear this. If you want to lane clear with Li Ming, the best way to do it is to simply walk to the side of the lane like we are here and then throw your W into like the mage. And that'll cause it to splash to everything else in the area. You don't wanna just be throwing your Ws directly at the, um, the, the beefy boys in the front. It's gonna be a lot less effective that way. We do see the enemy team grouping up quite a bit. Calamity, wave of ours, give me some fucking cooldowns. We unfortunately didn't get any there. Oh, I wanted the kill so bad. All right, well, fucking what? Yeah, we needed to stand still while the shield was still on us. We didn't want to kite away from that too much more. You see that confidence, boys? Holy shit. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. Looking good. Looking good. Uh, I would say so far this is going uh, better than I expected. Oh, big damage. Now, I actually find myself running into some issues where I just spam my fucking buttons too fast. And I don't get a lot of the benefit that I could otherwise from uh, actually getting the resets. Like, I cast my ult there twice on a dead target, I think. Or once on a dead target and then one more time. Do we get extra damage versus buildings? We do. It gets a little symbol. A little blue symbol. Cool. So this is going to continue to scale up. It does continue to get better. At least that's what we're... You know, that's what we're hoping for. We're gonna get out of that, no problem. I can go back in here pretty soon if we wanna stay on this target. Especially if we keep poking him down. Just one application of the Seeker is all we need for the extra bonus damage, so that is pretty nice. Oh, too deep. Fuck! Ugh, gauge the damage a little bit wrong. At level 13, we gain Cannoneer. When Li Ming uses an ability, her next basic attack damage is increased by 75%. And it deals spell damage instead of physical. This was the part where we were a little concerned about the actual shielding of Tassadar coming into play with, uh, with Li Ming. We took a look at the tooltip and it says basic attack damage will heal the target. So, it should work. 
uh, it should scale up pretty crazy. So three stacks is what we need before we attack someone. You can gauge that here with Cannoneer, 75% increase, 150% increase, and then lastly a 225. We're proccing that bonus with our level one talent on Aetherwalker, which allows us to pretty much just teleport at, at, at will while we're out of combat. So if I landed any of my abilities, it might actually be impressive. And of course, this will continue to proc while we're fighting people as well. Bonus damage on Arthas here. Look at that! That was like 500 damage from an auto attack. Now, I do have to hit with the Seeker first to really get the most out of this. I should be able to auto attack her pretty hard. There we go, dude! Look at that! Oh, God, are we winning? Hold on. Guys, we gotta stop winning these games immediately. We'll step to the side, blink in. Woo. Now, the downside of this, and it's a very big downside, this is why we ran double support with this. The biggest negative with running a build like this is we quite simply just don't have a lot of health. We can go for Fireflies, which is going to reduce our cooldown a little bit more on our Q, allowing us not only to spam out the Q more to proc the extra damage, but of course, proc the extra damage for the Q, but also proc the extra damage from Cannoneer, making it easier to get that 225% auto attack damage increase. Wow, it doesn't work. Did the, did the, did the Tassadar shield not proc, chat? Did it not work? Look at that though, holy fuck. Oh my God. <laughs> I feel like this is one of those builds that I could just feel drunk with power. Uh, I, this this is a gray main syndrome build. You gotta be careful, you gotta keep it in check, you know? Oh, everyone is so low. Everyone is so low. Oh, shit. Shit, 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 shit. Back it up, back it up. Well, we just fucking what? I did how much damage? All right. Well, uh, that, 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 uh, whoop. To be fair, we kind of had the best comp. Not only for this build to support the Li Ming, but also for this map. Uh, Johanna Azardan on, on, on this map is fucking ridiculous. Epic. Especially when you're playing the way we were, where we're trying to stack up the Azardan as fast as possible. Not enough people do that these days. Help your Azardan and he'll help you. Um, th uh, that being said, it worked pretty well. Now we actually weren't done scaling. There, there, there was a little, there was a little bit more to this. Uh, it does come with some added complexity, though. It's not something that I would feel personal, uh, uh, not not personally able to do consistently. So the build we did so far: Aether Walkers into Charge Blast, Calamity, Wave of Force, Cannoneer, and Fireflies. At level 20, there is a phenomenal talent for pretty much any Leeming build that goes by the name of Talrasha's Elements. Also a fantastic set in Diablo 3 if you ever feel so inclined to play it. Casting abilities increases the damage of your next ability by 5% up to 20%. This bonus is reset when the same ability is used within the chain. So you can get a 20% spell power increase that stacks with the Cannoneer bonus, that stacks with the Seeker bonus, the Seeker auto attack damage bonus. We did check that, by the way. We went into try mode right before this. And the, where is it? The char charge blast, this bonus magic damage scales with spell damage. So you can even scale up her auto attack damage a little bit more with something like a nano boost, which oh my God. Or, oh, sorry, I just thought about how ridiculous that would be. And uh, an Ario Crown, uh, Varian Banner, uh, Charism Blue Man, any of those things would also increase the just natural damage of her auto attack. 
fucking awesome. So glad I tried this. I don't know what I'm going to try next, but thank you guys for watching. This was recorded on Viewer Game Tuesday, which happened on Wednesday this week. If you want to stop by on Twitch and see more games, there's a link in the video description. Okay, bye.